Are you working on your author career, but struggling to get that first book published? Does the goal of being an author seem too lofty? Or are thoughts of having multiple books and making a full-time living are as fantastical as living in Cinderella's castle? Welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where aspiring authors can be heard. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have gotten their foot on the author career path. Hear what they've done to get there and where they want to go now. Settle back. It's time for a bit of inspiration and advice. Come listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. Welcome to another episode of Discovered Wordsmiths. Today, I've got Jeff Johnson. Jeff wrote a book called Boy Lessons, which is interesting because last week we had Doug Neust on talking about man lessons. So these two books are very similar and it was kind of fun talking to both of them separately. Uh, if you like these type of books, the nonfiction books, the ones with self-help, the lessons in life, let me know. Uh, if we need more of these type of books on here, I'd love to interview more authors like this. But please, any of the books you listen to, the podcast episode you listen to, go check out the books. Let the authors know where you found it. Let them know what you think of the books. These authors need some support, and that's what we do. So now, listen to Jeff. Here we go. Well, Jeff, thank you for coming on the podcast and talking to me today. It's great to have you. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. I'm I'm glad to be here from a from a distance. <laughs> right? Yeah, aren't we all? So before we get into your book, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, a bit about your background, and some stuff you like to do besides writing? Um, sure. So I, uh, I'm a lifelong Minnesotan, save for a few years in Chicago and Washington, D.C., but I was born and raised in rural Minnesota and uh, came back here about 25 years ago after I got married to, um, to my college sweetheart, who's also from greater Minnesota. And we've been in the Twin Cities now for that whole time. We've got two boys who are the subject of the book that we're going to talk about. Thor is 22, I believe, and Rolf is 19. Uh, and we have a, an 11-year-old bulldog who's uh, kind of probably counting down his last months, um, hopefully not his last weeks, but um, uh, he's, been a, he's been a part of our family for a long time. My background professionally is as a lawyer. I, I practiced employment and labor law, both for a, a large corporation called Cargill and a couple of law firms in Chicago and here in Minneapolis. Uh, but I stopped practicing law probably 20 years ago and entered the, the world of politics. So I served a few terms in the Minnesota House of Representatives. And uh, now I just finished my last term on the Hennepin County Board, which is the largest county in the in the upper Midwest and the county seat is Minneapolis and um, ran for governor a couple times here in Minnesota was the Republican candidate twice and and uh, that wasn't to be but an unbelievably awesome experience despite election day and um, now I've moved on and um, started just uh, a few weeks ago as the CEO of a nonprofit called can do canines and we raise and train, service dogs, uh, um, service dogs for people with disabilities, for people who have mobility issues or hearing issues or diabetes or childhood autism or seizures. And it's, um, it's been a wonderful change. And I'm just really excited about that. Outside of writing, um, and this is the only book I've ever written, so I, I don't do a ton of writing, but um, I love to well, most of my life, the past 20 years, has been doing kid stuff with my boys, whether it's coaching or, or um, uh, work at church with the, with the kids program or the youth ministry program and um, tutoring kids. And I also like to golf. I'm not very good at it, but I do it every once in a while. I, I run to uh, clear my mind, uh, jog to clear my mind, and uh, I like to read. Nice. Well, we're going to come back and touch on some of those topics uh, in this part and then the next part, because I want to hear more about the canine uh, business. But before we do that, um, so your book is called Boys Stuff. Is that correct? Boy Lessons. Boy Lessons. I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, the last last guy. Okay. Boy Lessons. So before we talk about the actual book, why did you choose to to write about this book and what got you into wanting to write? Well, the the wanting to write piece was really um, 
it was almost a response to to my decision to leave politics. So in 2018, I was on the ballot in November 2018 for governor and um, lost that race and knew after that, which was my second race for governor, that it was time to move on from politics. That's one of the I think one of the biggest problems people in politics have is that they don't recognize when it's time to leave and it was time for me to leave. Um, so I had two years to figure that out because I had two years left on my term on the county board, which was nice. Um, and so I started looking around for, you know, something that would be meaningful to me. And at the same time decided, you know, if I'm, if I was wanted to write a book, I think most people would probably say that. Um, and I knew that if I was ever going to do it, that would be the time because once I started something new, your life kind of gets overtaken by that. Um, so I did that, that's when I decided, you know, in the next year and a half, essentially, I'm, I'm going to write a book. And that's when I started. And it took me quite a while because I just did it in little fits and starts. Um, the reason I wrote this book um, regarding, you know, what I've learned from from raising two boys and, you know, coaching kids and tutoring kids, boys. Um, it's amazing to me how every boy is is so unique, but so similar in um, in in the challenges that they present us as parents, and and I say that just because you know a lot of our friends, my wife and and my friends, are parents of my kids' friends, and so they are going through the same phases and the same ages that um, that we are or were at the time. And when we were honest with with each other as parents, as well as along with sharing those stories about how great your kid is. You'd share stories about the difficulties that they were causing you and the stresses that they were causing <laughs> and the disappointments right. that they were causing you. And they're all the same. Um, you know, obviously some are are more severe when it comes to those disappointments or frustrations than others, but um, they all go through the same uh, sorts of anxieties that are totally irrational. And they all go through that same period of of um, of selfishness and self-centeredness before they graduate from high school and um, you know they, there are just so many things that are similar about them and I wanted to write the book just to share with other parents so that they know they're not alone because every parent is going through this same thing no matter what they tell you when you're talking <laughs> right <to their> kids <laughs> and, and I love that so you took your personal life experiences for the moment and turned it into a book to help others which you could have made the choice to do that about politics, you know, how to survive in politics or yeah. uh, how to survive as a lawyer or anything. Why did you choose this as the, the thing you wanted to write about? Because Instead of those. this was easy. First of all, <laughs> a whole bunch of stories and they're fun stories and, and it, and I, you know, that would be casual. And um, it just, I just thought it would be much more, it was more interesting to me. Um, and I think it applies to so many more people. I mean, you write a, 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 a book about what you learned about politics. Well, that's probably interesting to people who want to go into politics, but a lot of the world wouldn't be all, wouldn't really care about that book. And I thought this is just, this applies to, you know, about half, about half the parents in the, in the world, because about half the parents have boys. And, and actually I'm learning from people who've read the book that a lot of the stories are just as um, just as accurate about girls, although there are a few things that are pretty unique. I, I, I love that because you may have heard of Chris Fox. He's one of the uh, writing gurus that a lot of people talk about. Yep. Um, and he has a book called Right to Market. And that's really essentially what you did is you looked at what you could write about and chose the one that had the better market, the bigger market, the market that you felt more comfortable talking to. Yeah, no, I, I that's, I, I don't know that I did that uh, on purpose, but you're right. That there is truth to that. Uh, yeah. It's, and I think a lot of people take the whole right to market as, uh, oh, I got to figure out what people are going to pay for and read, which you kind of did, but it wasn't solely from the fact of, uh, you know, this is a big market that needs addressed. It right. just made sense for you. So I, I like that. Uh, I'm going to make sure uh, I point this out to people when that yeah. topic comes up again. Well, it's interesting too, because, you know, as when I decided oh, I'm going to write a book about my boys and, and I wanted to keep it simple so that they're not long chapters. So these are just all short little lessons. And the, the, you know, the most obvious way to go about this was, you know, what are the 50 things that every dad should teach his boys. And, um, 
and I, I went online and there are 10,000 books that, <laughs> that say that, you know, here are the things that every boy should know and what every dad should teach his, his son. So even though there's a lot of similarity, I, I decided to take a, a slightly different tack and say, these are the things that I learned from my kids, um, you know, not because they're brilliant and they shared things from their brain to mine, but just because the, the actual uh, activity of being a parent, being a dad of boys just teaches you a lot and changes you a lot. And I, for, in my case, it made me better, I think, as a, as a person and as a man being able to, to raise kids, even though I screwed up plenty. <laughs> so is the book focused for parents or for the boy themselves? It's for the parents. Yeah. The, it parents. Is. Okay. And, um, and, you know, I, I state right in the introduction, I don't pretend to have been some super dad because I'm not. There was uh, there are a lot of the lessons that I learned in here that I learned because I messed up as a dad or that I learned too late. Um, you know, there are several things in here. Where I say, God, I wish I had done that as a dad. That would have been great. And I didn't. Um, and, you know, now maybe there's some benefit to another dad who's got little kids to, to say, well, maybe I should do that. Do it that right. way. And I, I, as a parent that has kids that are older, yes, I agree. That probably would have been great to have somebody walk into the waiting room and hand it to me right. and say, read this. So uh, give us an example. What are some of the stories and some of the things you talk to parents about in the book? Um, so, uh, you know, the, the very first one that comes to mind, and this is, this applies to, I maybe didn't do it just right as a dad, but especially for boys, sometimes they, they're not real emotive. They're not real. They don't share a lot of uh, details about their lives. And you know, both of our boys were chatterboxes as kids, as little kids. And then, I don't know, maybe eighth grade or so early to mid teen years, um, they weren't anymore. And uh, our younger boy is, is very outgoing and he, really kind of, he kind of shut down to a certain extent. It, it, it was difficult getting information from him. And our older boy, who was an introvert, just completely clammed up. So we never, you know, lots of yeah and no when, when you'd ask an open-ended question. Um, but the one thing I learned was that every once in a while, they decided that they just wanted to, to download information from their day. And usually it was after I had waited up for them to come home and desperately wanted to go to bed. But all of a sudden they, they decided they wanted to share every little detail of their day. And it was literally the last thing I wanted to do. Um, but I learned, and my wife was much better about this than I was, that, you, you know, if, you, if you're busy working or it's time to go to bed and they all of a sudden want to share things with you, even things that aren't all that interesting, every every little detail of their basketball practice it's time to set things aside and just sit and listen because you may never get that information from them otherwise. Um, and that's where and I think I get that, better as a dad. And not only that, but uh, you only got a couple chances really to do that. Right. No, that's, that's exactly right. Um, you know, another lesson that is, it's kind of special to me is um, one of the lessons is to, to, to enjoy the little moments with them that maybe don't seem like a big deal to you because they might be to them. And, and the example I give of that is our younger son was, I don't know, maybe he was 10 or 12 and he was in Cub Scouts. And we went on a little Cub Scout camping trip together, the two of us with other dads and their sons. And it was, it was miserable. It was, it was a hundred degrees. It was humid. The, the mosquitoes were everywhere. Um, we had to pitch our tent on a, an area that was all rocky and just terribly uncomfortable. And uh, it just, it wasn't a great experience. And so that night we got, we put up our tent and we got in our tent and ready to go to bed. And, and all of the, some of the other dads around us were already snoring so loud that I knew I was not going to sleep at all that night. Um, but um, we turned on the flashlight and we're kind of talking and, and he asked me the question, something to the effect of, dad, tell me the three greatest things that have ever happened to you in your life. And so it came up, I don't even remember what the three were because I was so, I was anticipating what he was going to say. And so I told him, and then I said, what are your three? And 
one of them was, I think the first time he wrote a, like a real scary roller coaster. And another one was, I don't remember what the second one was. It had to do with a trip we took. And the third one was, he said, this right now, just sitting here in this tent and talking to you, that's that one of the three greatest things that's ever happened to me. And it just made me recognize that um, you've got to appreciate those things that maybe aren't all that pleasant for you, or maybe don't seem very important because it might be one of the most important memories your kid has. That's, I think that's really great. And I think it's also great that you took all those lessons and wanted to put them into a book. Yeah, no, and and really, it's just a whole bunch of stories about, you know, the, the, um, the joys and the anxieties of, of being a parent, especially a parent of a boy. I was going to ask that, um, uh, is it more, more stories and less like lessons and teaching? You know, it's, it's kind of a mix of both. I, I treat them, you know, I think there's 55 lessons in there. So each one is a, is, you know, describes a lesson, but usually there's a story or two to go along with it. And what I've heard from people who have read it is that the stories are meaningful to them because they see their own kids in, in so many of these stories, because again, they're just, they are all so similar in what they go through over, you know, 18 or 20 years. Right. And I am learning as a dad of a 22 and a 19 year old that it, it doesn't necessarily get simple once they, <laughs> they start to grow up. Oh man. I, I was thinking that as you were talking, uh, my wife and I, we've got six and five oh, wow. of them are over 18 and it doesn't really change. It doesn't get simple that, you know, the first time they have to set a doctor appointment and go fill out the paperwork or go to a job interview, you know, they're in your face like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> no, that is, that's very true. And our older son just graduated from college a couple months ago. And so now he's in the the whole job search process and he's back home staying, living with us for probably a few months till he finds something. And and uh, yeah, you just realize they're they're not completely developed in their brains yet, even at especially boys, even at twenty two, right? And, and how many country songs are about guys after their father passes wishing they could just ask them one more thing? You yeah. know? Yep. No, I don't. Um, so true. So, did you uh, publish this yourself, or did you get an agent and a publisher? No, I did it myself. Um, I I tried to. Um, I didn't even pitch it to anyone because I, you know, I, I talked to some people who knew the business and they said, you can try that, but it's going to be hard. Um, and I really wanted to get it written and done and out before I started my new job on January 1st. Um, so, a, you know, an 8, 10, 12 month process wasn't realistic for me. So I just decided to do it on my own, got the help of a, of a professional editor and hired her. She was great um, and did hire somebody to do the cover design and the interior design. So, you know, spent a couple thousand bucks in the end. And then, um, and then another person who helped me kind of navigate Amazon and all the other things that I had to do, which is, can be a little daunting, I think, if you don't have a bunch of time. Right. So uh, it's been out for how long? Um, six weeks, seven weeks. It was not too long. In November that I put it out. Okay. And <laughs> what type of feedback have you been getting from readers? I've been getting great feedback. I mean, the, the, you know, the reviews on Amazon, there aren't a ton of them, but there's 20 or 25 and they've all been just really positive. Um, and you know, some of those reviews are from my friends and family, but when I started getting ones from people I'd never heard of, that actually meant something to me. It wasn't just someone being nice because they knew me. Right. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm on, uh, oh God, it's called discovery or readsy or something like that. And, and that, had a, a really great review with five stars and somebody, you know, put some real effort into writing it. Um, it's just been really positive. And I, and I think it is because people, again, they're seeing their own kids in these stories and the, and the stories, I mean, I try to show a little humor and humility in it. And I think people, um, people appreciate that because, you know, we all, everybody's got great kids or almost everybody has great kids and mostly you hear about how great those kids are and people don't often share the, you know, the anxiety that goes with it and, and where they mess up. And uh, I think it's, I think people appreciate seeing that. And by the way, I did let both of my boys read this before I, I <laughs> did it and, and they both had veto power over everything and, and uh, didn't choose to, to change anything. So I appreciated that. Oh, nice. Good. Um, 
So it's available on Amazon. Do you have it anywhere else available? You know, I, um, yes, there's a, there's a site called itaskabooks.com that is selling signed copies for the same price. Um, and then I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on most of the other sites as well, Barnes and Noble. And I think it's on Apple books. Um, cause I went through, um, Ingram. So I think they, they kind of put it out far and wide. So, uh, you've got this available ebook and print. Yes. Yeah. Do you find it's selling better one or the other? Yeah. Many more print copies than ebook. Uh, not even close. And uh, why do you think that is? You know, I have no idea other than for me. I mean, maybe there's just a lot of people like me 10, 15 years ago, whenever it was that I, you know, got my iPad and started deciding I was going to do eBooks. It just wasn't the same. And now I do very few eBooks and I just prefer to have a paper copy in my hand. So I don't know if that's, you know, if, if, if that's it or if the topic has anything to do with that, whether it's just all books are that way, but I'd say it's, it's at least 10 to one paper. Uh, well, actually I was, I was placing a bet with myself that you were selling more print copies, uh, really? a lot of self-help and seem to um, sell more print, at least as what I have seen and um, things for kids, whether it's for kids or a nonfiction parenting type book, they seem to be more print. So that's interesting. Um, yeah, no, that's definitely the case here. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a short and small book. So it's easy for people to, you know, to, to stick in a, a folder or a, or a backpack or a super briefcase or something like that. Have you uh, thought of trying to do an audio book? You know, I, I thought about a little bit and, and talked to my a friend who was in the publishing business and he said, you know, you can do that, but he, he didn't recommend it because it probably wouldn't be the sort of book that, a lot of people would want to listen to. They'd actually want to read it and and maybe read it again. Um, so I haven't. I don't know if you have any advice there. Um, well, uh, I know audiobooks are picking up, and I know a lot of people like to listen to audiobooks. Um, I don't know. It's just something maybe uh, to think about. You've got a very pleasant voice. You could even try and record it yourself and see what happens. Yeah, no, um, I, I guess I hadn't really given once he said, Ed, eh, just just get the thing out and don't worry about it. I haven't really given it a second thought, but that'd be kind of fun to do. Yeah. Um, so do you have any plans for another book? I don't. Um I am uh no, I don't. I, I've I've got ideas for other books, but I'm pretty sure in the short term and probably the medium term for the next several years, I'm gonna be really focused on my new venture here and I just probably won't be able to, or, or won't choose to put the time into that. Um, but you know, maybe 10 years down the road or when I retire, it'd be fun to do something again. Yeah. Um, cause there's also, uh, lots of other things like, uh, an actual like workbook, which goes hand in hand and has exercises or places for parents to write down notes on what they did and, things like that. Uh, it's just the possibilities of doing this in many other ways independently is pretty staggering sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I hadn't given that any thought of, you know, kind of a little more interactive, you know, something else to go with this book as opposed to just starting from scratch with something different. Um, and that would be, I mean, that would be kind of fun. I think it would be, if I, if I would put the time into it, it could be very useful, I think, for other parents. Maybe down the road. Maybe. That'd be interesting to hear later if you've done anything more and what happened with it. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'll give that. So, so, Jeff, do you have any favorite books and authors that you've read throughout your life? Um, I, I, uh, I do. I, um, there is, uh, oh, God, now I, I can't recall the name of the author, but what it takes is a book that's a political book that I have read um, more than once. Uh, there's a book called Abraham that I, that's the most recent book that I've read that uh, I thoroughly have enjoyed. I tend to be a nonfiction, um, a nonfiction reader. So I, I love biographies and uh, just read, um, they're just probably halfway through a um, nonfiction book about 
Dodge City, Kansas. And I apologize that I can't remember the names of the authors of these books, but um, it's uh, it's essentially a book about um, about uh, that cow town that you know turned into the Wild West essentially. And um, I'm thoroughly enjoying that. So most of my reading time is with nonfiction and history and biography. Okay. Well, that's uh, I'll have to look up some of those books and link them in the show notes. Yeah, that'd be great. They're they're good. And where you live, do you have a local bookstore that you like to go to? Um, not a, not just kind of a mom and pop local bookstore. Um, in fact, I don't know that in, in the suburb that I'm in, I don't know that we actually have one, to be honest. We've got, you know, there, there was a Barnes and Noble at the, at the mall. Um, but, uh, most of my books I have ordered online for the past several years now. And I usually try to have two or three sitting by the bed at once and just read them all at the same time in, in different chunks. Okay. Well, before we close this part of the podcast, if there's someone listening and they're debating whether to buy your book or not, what would you tell them uh, a reason that they should go get your book? Um, I will tell them it's a, it's a very quick and fun read. Um, and if you are a parent particularly a parent of a boy or maybe a grandparent of a boy, um, you will you will appreciate the stories because they'll be familiar to you and you might learn something about um, doing what you do even better. Great. All right, Jeff. Well, I appreciate you taking some time to talk to us about the book. And uh, for everyone that's interested, we're going to have a second half of the podcast where we talk about uh, the life transitions and writing a book. So thank you very much, Jeff. Yep. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for listening to Discovered Wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.